Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is East of Religion and the Government Beloved family, our text says, And he left them, and getting into the boat again, departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, and they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. Then he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, is it because we have no bread? But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you still not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? They said to him, Twelve. Also, when I broke the seven for the four thousand, how many large baskets full of fragments did you take up? They said, Seven. Mark 8, 13 to 20. What is that in religion? that rises up in the people, that causes them to depart from the presence of God. Even though they think they're staying in the presence of God by staying in religion. Oh, Father, help me plant this seed today. In order to answer this question, let's look at the mindset of the disciples. For they were, don't miss this, in the presence of God, but did not have the presence of God in them. Huh? What do you mean, man of God? Well, religion have a way of bringing you into the ritual of church or service, going through the program and through the motion, and when God shows up, you miss him. Why? Because in order for you to truly get in his presence, you need to have his presence near or in you. People come to church and sit in the same pew. That's old school there. The same seat. And when some come in, when you're in their seat, they have a problem. They look at you as to say, you are in my seat. I sit there every Sunday. But that is the problem with religion. It causes people to spectate and not participate. Oh, I can envision the stadium right now with the number seat and the people purchasing season ticket seats and they expect to sit in this seat to spectate. Yet, in the stadiums, these people shout for the winning teams. They shout and they cheer for their team loudly. But some of us get in church and we zip our lip and we can't give God praise. We can't shout hallelujah. We can't shout praise God. We can't shout thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me with another day. You have a gift to sing, and you already know the praise team could use some help. God is trying to get you to get up and put up. Stop waiting for someone else to do what God equipped you to do. Take that singing from the shower to the praise team. Some others of you can preach the word and have other gifts that the body of Christ needs. What you don't realize is that your purpose and gift was meant to serve the body of Christ, not yourself. Our opening text says, Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, and they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. King Jesus talking spiritually as he usually does and says to them, Beware of the leaven or yeast of religion. I wonder what ingredient in religion that is like yeast that is rising up in the life of God's people, itching ears to hear what we want to hear from a false prophet of God. He says, beware of the yeast of Herod. That's government. 
and the yeast of the Pharisees. That's religion. Oh, don't miss that. King Jesus says there is a leaven or yeast that the government of man and religion that both of them want us to ingest. King Jesus is saying not to ingest or digest it. When the yeast mix into the dough, it causes the entire dough to rise. Correct? The yeast has to get in on the inside. Well, Jesus is saying, don't let the doctrines of men, the lies of the world, the policies of wicked governments and laws, the deceitfulness of riches get into your system and cause you to rise up and rebel against your God. That's how the leaven of religion and the government is. Remember, King Herod represents the government. The Pharisees represents religion. So if you listen to the wrong teaching, it gets into your heart and mind. Even when you watch the wrong things on television, it becomes a permanent imprint on your mind and is hard to shake. Permanent picture is a message we planted. Listen to that one as well. Have you ever listened to a song, even unintentionally, and you can't shake that song out of your head? Paul put it this way. Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Romans 12, 2. The Holy Spirit has a tough job. He has to renew our minds. How tough is that, you ask? Look at the conversation in our opening text. The disciples, those who have been walking talking and learning from Jesus Christ himself. God in the flesh was just with him when he multiplied two fish and five loaves of bread. He fed over 5,000 people that day, not counting women and children, and had leftovers. But only moments later, the disciples are in the boat, in the presence of the master, and they're arguing about lack of bread. King Jesus warns them about this leaven of religion and the leaven of the world or government that they're indulging in, but they missed the lesson. All this time, King Jesus was teaching them to avoid the leaven of religion and receive the leaven of heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is what's supposed to be rising up in you and I, family. Give us this day our daily bread. Oh, there it is again, the bread of heaven, the manna that fell from heaven. He is the bread of life. Those who eat me, Christ says, will never hunger anymore. Oh, and this bread, the bread of life, didn't rise from yeast, but it rose on the third day. It's the risen bread of life that when we now eat, it satisfies our eternal hunger and gives us eternal life. Much love.